Listen to this. Now listen to this. These sounds represent two completely different ways of making an egregarious amount of power. And by the end of this video, you'll know exactly which one belongs in your build. Whether you're planning your next build or just want to understand what separates a Hellcat Supercharger whine from a Supra's turbo whistle, this breakdown covers everything you need to know. Starting off with a little recap, both superchargers and turbochargers accomplish the same goal, cramming more air into your engine than it could naturally aspirate. More air means more fuel, more fuel means bigger explosions, and bigger explosions means more power. But the way they both achieve this couldn't be more different. Here's a quick breakdown. Superchargers are belt driven directly from your crankshaft. They're mechanical pumps that compress air using engine power, delivering an immediate boost from the moment you hit the throttle. Turbochargers are exhaust driven turbines. They harvest energy from hot exhaust gases that would otherwise be wasted, using that energy to spin a compressor that forces air into the engine. This fundamental difference in power sources affects everything from response time, efficiency, complexity, and the sound. Let's get into the engineering. A supercharger is mechanically simple. It's directly connected to your engine through belts and pulleys, whether it's a roots blower, a twin screw, or a centrifugal design. It spins at a predictable ratio to your engine speed and immediately compresses the air. The downside, it's a parasitic load. Every bit of boost it creates costs your engine power to drive it. At lower RPMs, this trade-off heavily favors towards you, but at higher RPMs, a supercharger can consume 50 to 100 horsepower just to operate. Turbochargers are more complex but more indigenous. Exhaust gases spin a turbine wheel connected by a shaft to a compressor wheel. The compressor wheel sits in the intake track, compressing incoming air. It's essentially recycling waste energy. The beauty is efficiency. You're not stealing power from the crankshaft. The downside is, though, the complexity. Oil supply lines, coolant lines, intercoolers, wastegates, and the infamous turbo lag as the system spools up. Here's where these systems show their true personality differences. Superchargers deliver instant gratification. Hit the throttle and the boost is immediate. There's no waiting, no building, and no pressure. The power delivery is linear and predictable because the boost directly correlates with engine RPMs. This makes supercharged cars incredibly responsive in traffic, amazing for drag launches, and gives you that immediate torque that pins you to your seat. Much differently, modern turbos have dramatically reduced lag, but physics is physics. It takes time to heat exhaust gas, spin the turbine, and build boost pressure. However, once spooled, turbos often deliver more dramatic power gains and can maintain boost better at high RPMs, since they're not parasitically loaded like superchargers. The power curve difference is significant. Supercharged engines often make peak torque early and maintain it, while turbocharged engines build to a peak and can sustain high power output longer through the RPM range. This is where turbos shine, and manufacturers have taken notice. When you're cruising at steady throttle, turbo isn't working hard. Minimal exhaust energy means minimal boost, and your engine operates almost like a naturally aspirated motor. Superchargers are always on. Even at light throttle, they're spinning and consuming power. This makes turbocharged cars significantly more fuel efficient in real world driving conditions. That's why nearly every modern performance car from the factory using turbochargers, the efficiency gains are too significant to ignore. But efficiency isn't just about fuel. Turbochargers also allow for smaller displacement engines that produce equivalent power to larger naturally aspirated engines, reducing overall vehicle weight and improving vehicle handling. Installation complexity varies dramatically between these systems. Supercharger installations are generally more straightforward because you're dealing with brackets, belts, pulleys, and an intake manifold. Most systems can be installed in a fair amount of time with basic tools. Turbocharger installations are significantly more complex. You need custom manifolds, oil supply and return lines, intercoolers, piping, wastegates, blow-off valves, and often different engine management systems. Professional installation is usually recommended. 
the component count difference is staggering as well. A basic supercharger kit might have 20 to 30 components, while a complete turbo system can have a, over 100 individual parts. However, this complexity brings benefits. Turbos offer more tuning flexibility, better efficiency, and often more power potential in the long run. Let's talk about arguably the best part. The sound of both these operations is truly unique. Superchargers produce that distinctive mechanical whine. Think of the Hellcat, the Camaro ZL1, and some other classic muscle cars. While turbochargers create their own symphony, the whistle of the compressor, the flutter of the blow-off valve, and that distinctive sound on aggressive setups. Initial costs range widely, but generally supercharger kits start around four to $8,000 for basic systems, while turbo kits typically range from three to $10,000, depending on the complexity and potential gains. Maintenance tells a different story. Superchargers are generally more reliable long-term with fewer failure points. Basic maintenance involves belt changes and occasional bearing servicing. Turbos require more attention. Oil changes become critical. Intercooler always needs cleaning. And the high heat and high RPM environment means more frequent component replacement. However, modern turbos are far more reliable than older ones. So, which one wins? It depends on your priorities and applications. Choose a supercharger if you want instant throttle response, simpler installation and maintenance, or primarily do street driving and drag racing. Go turbocharged, higher power potential, or do a lot of highway driving. The efficiency gains and power potential make them perfect for daily driving. Honestly, we're living in the golden age of forced induction. Both systems have evolved tremendously, and either choice will transform your driving experience. So, what's your preference? Instant boost or efficient power? Drop your thoughts in the comments. And if this breakdown helped clarify the differences, hit the subscribe button to see more videos like this. Also, let me know what kind of videos you'd love to see in the future.